Well, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning. But I got something else good other than a greeting. I got good news. We get to do math, and I just dropped my only black marker. But that's okay, so let's get it. Specifically, we're going to devise some rational expressions. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to do it with a green pen, which is not my favorite type of pen. Unfortunately, I'm a little short on uh, whiteboard markers at the moment, so let's get it. If you're going to divide rational expressions, first thing you've got to remember is that we don't really divide fractions. Instead of dividing, what we do is we invert and then we multiply that thing. So do that first. You don't have to, that's what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to rewrite this, x squared plus 3x minus 10, all of that over x squared plus 6x minus 7. So I'm going, I just always invert the one on the right. You can invert the one on the left if you want. It's all good. It don't matter. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, for emphasis, I'm gonna switch to green. And it ain't even December, I ain't trying to bring a Christmas atmosphere, or else I'd be playing Christmas carols instead of this cool jam. Oh man, oh man. And it's Friday too. <laughs> and school's out. Probably like, Mr. Miller, what the hell are you doing in here? It's a good question. All right. I'm here because I love to teach, and I hope you learn something. So look at what I did is I flipped it. Okay, my denominator is now my numerator, and my numerator is now my denominator, and now I'm ready. Division became multiplication, and that looks a little crazy, but these are trinomials, and that's a binomial. And we got to be in the mindset that when we see those, we're going to factor them. In a previous video when I was talking about simplifying rational expressions, I had this kind of, it, it wasn't very specific, but I just said you do these two things. You factor things, and you cancel stuff. It's kind of similar even when you multiply them and divide them. So I'm gonna factor one, two, three, four things. So let's get it, let's get on this ride together. Hopefully you can see, I'm gonna go for my, one of my thinner pens here. Uh, X squared plus three X minus 10. So first thing I always do in a factory is I set up this kind of Xbox uh, system here and I put this number is whatever the, the last term, which is C, times A, which is the number in front, which is one. So that's negative 10 and the middle is three. Now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 10, but add to give me three. This, sports fans, is a puzzle. I like puzzles, so I love to factor. I'm trying to find these two numbers, and I already see them because I factored this one a couple times, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's look at this. Uh, we got to go 5 and 2. 5 and 2. Now, because they multiply to a negative, one of them has to be negative. And because they add to a positive, the larger one must be positive. So we are going to go negative 2. Now this is a trick, and usually it is a trick uh, when, when you're doing the, the rational expressions because they don't want the factoring to be too hard. But when this lead coefficient's one, your answer is right here. It's just a five and a negative two. So I'm gonna rewrite this uh, down below. Let me see. We got uh, x plus five, x minus two. Boom! All right. Now we're gonna do the same thing down here, but it's all good. And I'm just going to just conserve space. I'm going to kind of steal my previous puzzle here. All right. So now I got negative 7 times 1 gives me negative 7. And I got two numbers again now that multiply to give me negative 7 and add to give me 6. Well, 7 is a prime number, so I know it's got to be 1 times 7. It's got to be 1 times 7. It's got to be. So <laughs> that's, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, quite honestly, don't ask. All right, so seven times one, one of these has to be negative. Uh, they add to a positive, so I'm gonna let the biggest one uh, be positive and go negative there, so seven, negative one. Because the leading coefficient is one, I can just roll that this is the solution, so I'm gonna go x plus seven, 
X minus one. I got nothing to cancel yet, so I'm like, damn! Because I would like to cancel something, but I guess I'm not gonna be able to do that quite yet. But let's see about this one. Let's see, here we go, because this is, I, I want you to do this. I want you to be creative when you're doing mathematics, because mathematics is creative. Uh, Three, all these numbers are divisible by three, so if they're all divisible by three, I say take out a three, that's what I say. I'm taking out a three, and I'm left with x squared plus six x minus seven. Now, I'm pretty actually excited about that because this is exactly this. So I'm just gonna, know what the solution is. It's got to be the same factor, right? That and that are going to factor the same way. So I'm going to go with 3 times x plus 7, x minus 1. I mean, it looks like we're doing a lot of steps, people, but basically when you're dividing, you invert and multiply. And at that point, just simplify. And how do you simplify? You factor things, and then you cancel stuff. I'm so I get see when there's no students in the room, it echoes so bad in here. I can't help but sing sometimes. I, it, it's kind of like when you're in the shower. Yeah. Okay. So we got a we got a binomial here. I'm always thinking difference of squares. This is my first impulse, although I'm not necessarily seeing it here. Um, we can, I'm going to look for a greatest common factor. So between 9 and 18, I'm going to go get myself a 9. Between x to the third and x squared, you always just take out the smallest exponent. It's always the uh, greatest common factor what, between two bases that are variables that have exponents. All right, so now I'm going like this. If I took out a 9, I got a 1 left over. Took out two x's, there was three of them, so I got an x. Minus 18, so 9 times 2 gives me 18, and there was an x squared, I took it out, it's not there anymore, and I erased my leading one. And look at what we got. Look at what we got. And did you even notice the music cut out? I mean, be honest, did you notice the music cut out? Those are my speakers, they're not the best. They're temperamental. Alright, so what we got? We got an x minus 1, bam, bam, sweet. We got an x minus 2, bam, bam, holla. Uh, we got an x plus 7, bam, bam, holla. What else do we got? We got a 3 and a 9, so that's going to become a 3, that's going to become a 1. Because they're both divisible by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. I think that's it. I think that's all of them. So now I'm going to do an equals. I still have an x plus 5, and all that's left down here is a 3, so we got x plus 5 divided by 3. Money! And all in green, I feel like, man, it is Christmas in May. It's Christmas in May. I don't know if anybody's uh, up on donors.org or donors choose, whatever that website is where you get to uh, fund teachers. But uh, I should probably be like, yo, I ain't got no more whiteboard markers. I'm a little, my Amazon Prime account's a little, a little pushed to the limit, if you, uh, one might say. Alright. I'm gonna put, we're only doing two problems here on this video. We're only doing two. And the good news is, that's all we need to do. We're gonna be alright. 5x minus 1. Divided by 5x squared plus 9x minus 2. I'm going to leave that there because you know that's where we go. You know it. So pause that damn video and try this. I encourage you, try it, fail at it. It's all good. That's how you learn. Pause. Unpause. I commend you on your efforts. You are a winner in my book and I don't even know you yet. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you wrote a comment and I read it, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so you know what we're gonna do, we're gonna invert and multiply. So I always do the one on the, on the right, that's the one that I decided to invert and multiply. So, we got x squared minus nine x minus 22 
all over 5x minus 1. Multiplying, I just, I don't know, I can't help myself. I just feel the need to switch colors there for emphasis. For emphasis. Now, you got to invert that. And you might say to yourself, Mr. Miller, that damn thing is not a fraction. I don't know how to invert it if it's not a fraction. All right, well, hey. Now it's a fraction. Boom. Everything's kind of over one. We don't write the over one because why? Because everything divided by one is just itself. So we don't bother to write it. But it's there. It's there. And now it's on the top. And the top is the numerator. And the bottom is the denominator. It's just what we do. It's just our convention. So follow me. We got some work to do. We got to factor this one. Factor that. And then we got to cancel some stuff. Hopefully. Probably. X box, all right? I just put multiply on the top, add on the bottom. Negative 22 times one is negative 22. Got negative nine. All right, this is a puzzle. Two numbers that multiply, I'm gonna go 11 and two. Uh, the biggest one's negative, so we gotta go negative on the 11, all right? Or else the nine would've been positive, which we wouldn't want. Uh, because the leading coefficient's one, the answer is always right there in the puzzle. So I'm going to go x minus 11, x plus 2, all over 5x minus 1. Multiplied by 1. Now we've got to factor this baby right here. Now that leading coefficient ain't 1, so we got a little more work to do. Got a little more to do. Uh, no worries, we're still going to go back to the puzzle. Maybe I'll just fill that in here, okay? We're still going to go back to the puzzle. Uh, the only difference is negative 2 times 5 is negative 10 and 9. Remember, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're really doing c times a, and we're putting b down here. Uh, so we got 10 and 1. Pro tip, if in an absolute value sense, if the difference between these two is only 1, then it's got to be that number times 1. All right? Pro tip. That's our negative, because they're adding to a positive number, so the bigger one better be positive. Um, Alright, so, but now we can't just assume that the answer is here, because that leading coefficient wasn't 1. So here's what we do. We rewrite this bad boy. We go 5x squared. Instead of putting the 9x, we go minus x plus 10x uh, minus 2. Notice I haven't really changed anything. I just split the middle term. It used to be a 9. Now it's negative 1 plus 10. Uh, you don't I led with the negative because I'd like to do that. Uh, you don't have to. It doesn't matter at all. I just like this middle term to be positive. Oh, just me. So what do you do now is you factor the front and back terms by greatest common factor. So between 5x and 1x, I'm going to take out an x. And I'm left with 5x minus 1, okay, probably use uh, parentheses instead of brackets, plus between 10 and 2, I'm taking out a 2, and I'm left with 5x minus 1. Almost done, you notice these two are the same, guess what, they're always going to be the same, every time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take them out because they are common, it's just the same as factoring out anything, you just take the commonality and you rip it out and you see what's left over, which is the x plus 2. So that goes here. We got 5x minus 1, x plus 2. Everything's factored. The only thing left to do is cancel stuff, and that's my favorite part. You got, when, and when you cancel stuff, cancel with a little emphasis. Be like, bam! Be like, hell no! And then see what's left over. I hope you can even see the bottom of this board. I think you can. I check. I think you can. Uh, we're going to have x minus 11 on the top. And on the bottom, 5x minus 1 times 5x minus 1 is 5x minus 1 squared. And I guess these parentheses aren't really doing much, so I'll get rid of them. And that's how we roll. That's how we roll. I hope you're having a beautiful day. You could, you could stop the video. I'm just going to do one more thing. And if you already know I've factored this, more power to you. I'm going to go back to when we knew it was negative x and 10. You could also do something called the box method. This is for factoring here. You leave with the 
5x squared, you end with a negative 2. In this part, you put your negative x and your 10. Alright, so 10x, negative x. You think the two numbers are going to multiply to get you here. That's 5x and x. And then 5x times 2 is 10x. And negative 1 times x is negative x. And then your answer is on the edges of, on the outsides of the box. So you get 5x minus 1, you get x plus 2. Really what you get when you do math and you have confidence, you get that feeling of accomplishment. I hope you have that right now. I really do. And I hope you have a beautiful day because you're a beautiful person. It's Friday. Off to the weekend! <laughs>